to talk a little bit about the uh, types of grants that are available to clubs in our district uh, to support projects both locally and internationally. I also think that uh, I want to spend a couple moments talking about how these grants are funded uh, and how the money that you donate to the Rotary Foundation flows through the foundation and comes back to us to be able to support your projects. And then we're going to spend a few moments talking about some of the changes that have taken place in the, in the uh, grant model uh, that are increasing the emphasis on uh, stewardship, uh, sustainability, and uh, then lastly I want to uh, touch base for just a moment on what we mean when we talk about humanitarian. Now this is the uh, a slide that was made up by the foundation staff, and I think that it's, it's really it's pretty busy, but it actually is a fairly decent depiction of how the money flows through the Rotary Foundation. Our, our donations typically go into the annual fund or the annual programs fund, and it sits there for a period of three years uh, accumulating interest. And that interest is what's used to pay the operating expenses of the foundation. So that 100% of your donation gets turned around and gets used for Rotary uh, sponsored projects and activities. When the money flows back out of, the, out of this pot, it gets split 50-50. 50% of it comes back to the district as, in what we call district designated funds or DDF. The other 50% goes into the World Fund and that money is used to support global grants uh, and uh, also is available for the trustees to use to support polio eradication. The money that stays or comes back to the district actually gets split again into two pots. Uh, one pot, which I'll talk about briefly, is the global grant pot, and this is how we match club projects that are uh, larger and are international focus and apply, comply with the requirements of the Rotary Foundation for global grants. The other 50% is actually a money transfer that comes back to the district and we actually write the checks or disperse the funds to clubs to support these activities. Uh, we do district community grants, and I'll discuss these grants in detail in just a couple minutes. We do district matching grants. Uh, we can do uh, district funded scholarships. We've uh, curtailed doing district sponsored vocational training teams because the real purpose of the vocational training team, in our opinion, is to support club projects uh, that want to have a, a, a greater emphasis on improving the capacity or capability of the host community uh, when we're putting in a, uh, a well or doing some other form of, uh, of improvement to those local communities overseas. Um, so the, I wanted to spend a moment about that so people could see how their donations that they make to the foundation do in fact come back to help us support club projects. The Rotary Foundation uh, grants, all foundation grants, need to take into account these basic concepts. Uh, that it's important that clubs exercise uh, proper financial control. And what we mean by that is that clubs need to uh, just exercise good business practices. Uh, you need to have more than one person involved in oversight of the, the grant money. You need to have multiple people signing off on the checks. People that are uh, in charge of the project should not be the ones that are administering the disbursement of funds. Those kinds of basic precepts uh, of the way we do business. We need to make sure that our projects are, are technically current. Um, we don't want to be doing, I'll give you a case in point. Um, so when I first joined Rotary, my club was all excited uh, because again, 1980, we were a small club, we didn't have a lot of money. But we were delivering a used fire truck to a community in Mexico so that they could use it to, as a tanker truck to deliver water from the source to their community. Well, today, that would not be considered to be a very friendly project to do, to take something that we consider obsolete and use and repackage it and send it someplace else and say, here, make this work. We need to make sure that the projects that we're uh, working on are, in fact, 
going to be uh, humanitarian, they're going to be long-lasting, and the communities that they're uh, located in are going to be able to sustain them. We need to make sure that our projects are the ones that the local community thinks are important. Not our project, it's their project. If these, if these are going to systems or, or improvements are going to be maintained, then they've got to agree that it has value to them. And so just because we have a bright idea doesn't necessarily mean that that's the right project for their community. A quick story I was told by uh, Ron Denham, who's the uh, lead of the Water and Sanitation Action Group. There are a team of engineers in Houston. Now, remember, Houston is the home of the Johnson Space Center, and one of the Rotary Clubs seems to have the corner on the scientists and engineers that work there. And they decided that they wanted to do something really truly innovative in the water uh, arena. So they put their heads together and came up with a, a portable desalinization plant uh, that could be crated up, shipped by air, delivered anywhere in the world, and with relative ease be set up. So they cast about to find a communities that they could uh, test this and see if it would work. And they ran all their studies and did everything, and they contacted a Rotary Club in Africa, and they said, oh, sure, great, come on over, we'll be happy to be your host. And so they got there, and they got the, the plant all set up and ready to go, and they're standing there with the power cord in their hand, and the village leader says, what's electricity? <laughs> so they had failed to understand what the, what the capabilities, the capacity, and the needs of that local community really are. And they had exerted an awful lot of effort and spent a lot of money that was not going to do any good for anyone. We need to make sure that our projects meet their objectives. It's not enough to just put it together and walk away from it. We need to look at it, we need to monitor it, we need to go back and revisit it to make sure that our projects are meeting the goals and objectives that we set forth in our original plan. And we need to understand that as Rotarians, when we're spending foundation money, we're spending our money, your money, and we need to treat it as such. And so the Rotary Foundation is placing a great deal of emphasis on stewardship. Now let's talk for just a moment about the different types of grants that are available to clubs in our districts. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna focus on each of these in order. I'm not gonna work across the slide. I'm gonna work down, go into the next slide, and talk about each one of these uh, in that manner. The first is a district community grant. Now these are small projects. Uh, typically, in our district, they run from a size of $1,000 to uh, six to $10,000. On the high end, it's a dollar-for-dollar dollar match from the club money up to a maximum of $2,500. Uh, it can be a local project or an international project, and, as, and it's a reimbursable grant. So because it's reimbursable, there's no need for the club to go through the Rotary Foundation Qualification Program for matching grants. But it, uh, it does require the club to uh, apply for the project. Uh, you apply for the project before you start. Once the project has been approved, the club can go ahead and execute the project, complete it submit a completion report, including the appropriate receipts, and the club will reimburse 50% of the cost of the project up to a maximum of $2,500, or whatever we agreed to when we approved the grant. So if you came in and asked for $2,000, and then as you got partway through the project, you had a donor that, that put some more money into it, you're gonna get the $2,000 that we approved and authorized. Um, the Money is paid after the project is completed. The typical period that we're looking at is that we want to have the completion reports or the projects completed by the 1st of May and the reports to us by the 1st of June. That gives us time to be able to go through, review the reports, uh, address any deficiencies if we see any, and sometimes there are some, uh, get those clarified before we have to submit our report back to Rotary Foundation uh, on how we've used the money. Now let's look at the uh, district community grants. The district community grants are larger. 
Typically, what we're talking about here is a project that's going to be at least $5,000, uh, possibly as much as $15,000. It's a, it is an international project, and as a formal international project, it requires that you have a host or partner Rotary Club in that uh, country. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the community where the project's going to take place, but you have to have somebody that's going to have boots on the ground where your project is taking place. You have 12 months from the time of receipt of funds to be able to complete the project. It's a 50 cent to the dollar match, uh, and as I said, it can, there, there are, uh, it can be of any size, but the maximum amount of the grant from the district will be $10,000. Uh, there is no Rotary Foundation match on either of the two district grants, either the district community grants or the district matching grants. Uh, we in strongly encourage that multiple people be involved in your club in developing and, and putting together these projects. Um, we have a situation right now in uh, one of the clubs in Pierce County where they were doing an international project and uh, their partner on the ground only had one person engaged in the project. Well, uh, and this was in India, and there are monsoons in India. And this individual's home was literally destroyed and washed away by the monsoon. And when that happened, all of the on-site records related to the project were lost. And they had to spend several months trying to reconstruct all those records so that they could satisfy the reporting requirements. So sometimes things happen. Uh, when you're working on an international project, sometimes it happens in your own clubs. There's a club, uh, what the Bainbridge Island Club was working on a project, uh, an ongoing project in Africa. Their lead person, totally out of the blue, was transferred by his company from, Bain from Seattle to New York City. And therefore, they had to, to scramble to find somebody that really understood uh, what was going on in their projects in Africa. Uh, we do require clubs to be qualified. You had a couple of people that attended the grant management seminar on the 6th, so uh, your club has met that hurdle if you want to do a district matching grant next year. Uh, all you have to do next is to sign off on the district memorandum of understanding that says that you understand what the rules are, what the requirements are, that Rotary and the district are placing on clubs in order to receive Rotary Foundation funds. The uh, proposals or the applications for both the district grants can be submitted electronically. We ask for a proposal because what we have to do when we submit the request for funds from to the Rotary Foundation each year is we have to give them an idea as to how it's going to be spent. And they want uh, to know what we're going to do, where we're going to do it, and how much it's going to be spent doing it. And we have to do this for each activity in each club. Uh, so we ask that that information be sent to us in April uh, or May before the Rotary year starts so that we can start compiling that information and developing our plan to submit to the Rotary Foundation. Our proposal or our grant applications are available online on the district website at rotary5020.org. Uh, and uh, although they may say 2010-11 at the top of the form, in reality we have that's when we started the pilot, and that's the most current uh, application form that we have. Once the grant is approved and we have received the money from the Rotary Foundation, we will then forward that money to your club. Typically, for clubs in the U.S., that means that we mail a check. And we mail that check to your official club mailing address. So if you're using a post office box, uh, you need to make sure that you're set up for somebody to check that box frequently. We've had checks uh, get misplaced, and that causes everybody some heartburn. Uh, you can, uh, and then when the project is reported or completed, we ask that you, within two months, send the report with completed documentation, including receipts, to us so that we can, again, account for the money. Uh, when we report back to the Rotary Foundation that we've got a complete file that's closed. 
The final type of grants that are available to clubs in our district are what we call global grants. These are the Rotary Foundation grants. Uh, in our district, with the matching formula that we use, we're talking a minimum project size of $35,000. Uh, it does require a host club. Uh, it, right now, these charts reflect that we're still in the pilot program. Uh, so right now, if we're doing a global grant, it has to be in another pilot district, one of the 100 around the world. Interestingly, in the three years of the pilot, uh, we have done a total of 42 grants, or 42 grant applications, and of those, 40% are in two districts. District 9200 in Africa, and District 4250 in Central America. Uh, when we, the pilot program ends on 30 June of 2013, the entire Rotary world will come under the new grant model, and we expect to see that uh, concentration begin to be diluted a little bit as clubs move uh, into other parts of the world and other districts to do projects. The there is no preset finish date for a global grant. It's as long as it takes to finish it. You'll be asked on your application what's your schedule, and your schedule may be 12 months, maybe 15 months, maybe 24 months. But that's just a, a uh, an estimate. It's just a plan, and so these things uh, are, will take as long as they take to complete. Um, it's a dollar for dollar match from the district. So if the club puts in $10,000, the district puts in $10,000, then the Rotary Foundation matches the district money dollar for dollar and matches the club money 50 cents on the dollar. So as I said, if the club puts in 10,000, the district puts in 10,000, the Rotary Foundation puts in 15,000 for your $35,000 project. The club contribution under this formula has to be at least $10,000. Uh, the minimum global grant from the Rotary Foundation is $15,000. Uh, so that's how that math works out. We encourage clubs, if they're not prepared to undertake this on their own, to partner with other clubs, either locally or, uh, and when we go worldwide, you'll be able to partner with any club anywhere in the world uh, to be able to put these projects together. Uh, there has to be one club and lead and, in responsible, and the responsibility for the funds. And when we talk about three committee members on a global grant, all three committee members have to be from the lead club. You can't have, uh, if you were partnering with Tacoma 8 and, uh, let's say, uh, Gig Harbor, you can't have a Rotarian from each club. If, if this club, Tacoma Sunrise, is going to be the lead club, then all three members of that committee have to be from this club. Uh, the same thing is also true in a host club. All three members have to be from the, the host club that's partnering with you on this project. I want to point out that one of the concerns we have, as I mentioned, we're seeing a concentration in District 9200 and District 4250. There are a limited number of clubs in those districts. No club can have more than 10 global grants outstanding at any one time. Since we're doing uh, roughly 10 projects right now in District 9200, which is Ethiopia, Uganda, and Kenya, uh, how many other districts around the world are doing grants in those three countries as well? When you think about it, that's one of the reasons we are seeing a significant delay in the approval of grant applications from that district because the host clubs have exhausted the number of grants that they can have open at any one time. And so what's happening is we have to wait till they close one so they can get a new one. Uh, both clubs, the lead club and the host club, have to be qualified by attending a grant management seminar and by signing their district's memorandum of understanding. Um, only the lead clubs have to be qualified. The partner clubs do not have to be qualified. Uh, the Rotary Foundation requires a proposal. This is a rather lengthy uh, series of questions that have to be addressed in terms of how the project is going to be constructed, how does it link to the particular area of focus, how is it going to be sustained, and how is the money going to be managed, among other things. Uh, the application is submitted directly online to the Rotary Foundation. 
or the proposal is submitted online to the Rotary Foundation. Once the Rotary Foundation staff has reviewed your proposal, if it meets their uh, minimum requirements, the club will be invited to submit an application. At that stage, that's the first time that the district is officially notified of the club's intent to pursue a grant. The uh, application itself is a totally separate form uh, that you have to replicate the information that you had in the proposal. When you submit your proposal and they, they come back to you, they will point out areas that need to be addressed or specific areas that they see that need to be strengthened. The thing I want to point out with this is there's a tendency on the part of people to think that the Rotary Foundation staff is simply harassing them, that they're, they're nitpicking, they're, they're uh, requiring far more information than is necessary. In reality, understand that that person that you're dealing with uh, is a coordinator for all grants going to that particular country or that particular district. They have been through these grants before. They've been through the process before. They know the kinds of questions that are going to be raised by those people that are authorized to, to approve the grant. So they're trying to help you have an application that addresses those questions up front rather than having to get into a continual exchange of emails trying to fill in uh, holes that were in your application. They were really trying to make sure that you're going to have a successful application that it's going to be approved, and that you're going to be able to proceed with your project. Uh, once your application has been approved, the club will be asked, or the, the both clubs will be asked, where do you want the money sent? Do you want the money sent to you as the international club for you to manage? Do you want to have it sent to the host club for them to manage it on site? This is up to you and the host club to negotiate and agree to. And make sure that you've done that. We had one grant where they didn't agree, and, that, and we're, gonna, we're suggesting that this be changed, but right now the way it's set up is whoever gets in there last gets the final information as to where the money's gonna be sent. So the, the club here said, we want the money to come to us. The club in Ethiopia said, we want the money to come to us, and they got there last, so the money went to Ethiopia. And uh, it's caused some difficulty because the club in Ethiopia is approximately 100 miles from where the project is. The club in Ethiopia turned the money over to a, a uh, contractor. Uh, they overspent the money, the grant, by about $10,000. The club in Ethiopia came back to the club in our district and said, oops, we need more money and the clubs are still scrambling to try to find that additional $10,000 to finish off that project because you can't get additional money from the foundation once the grant's been approved. Uh, the money is, as soon as everything has been worked out and everybody has agreed on where the money's to be sent, they electronically transfer it to that bank account. Money in global grants has to be maintained in a separate bank account, cannot be commingled with club general funds. Uh, you're required to submit a report every year or until the grant has been completed. You have your the deadline is or the, the goal is that two months after completion the final report will be submitted to the Rotary Foundation uh, including the necessary receipts and copies of the bank statements. That's one that sometimes catches people by surprise is that when you're completing a global grant the Rotary Foundation wants to see the bank statements associated with the bank account. I mentioned earlier that the Rotary Foundation is uh, paying particular attention to the question of stewardship. Now some people look at this and, and kind of wonder why all of a sudden we're, we're putting this so much in the forefront. Um, and that's because we're now putting the expectations up front. Under the old system, you, you got the money, completed the project, submitted the reports, and then they started asking questions. Now what they do is that by going through the training, by laying out all the expectations early on, what we're seeing is that there are far fewer questions asked about why and how the money was spent. These are just some of the steps that we're looking at. And I want to point out two of them. One is rotor or carry and supervision of a project. What that means is that one of the two rotary clubs 
has to be engaged in making sure that the project is properly uh, undertaken. And one of the two Rotary Clubs has to be the custodian of the funds. You cannot turn the funds over to a partner organization. Uh, every club has a responsibility that if there's something that doesn't feel right, bring it to the attention of the Rotary Foundation, bring it to the attention of the district. Maybe there's no problem, but we would much rather look early than try to figure out what happened and have to get re-engaged in, in money that was not properly spent uh, per the, the way the, grant, the application was stated. Once your grant has been approved, you cannot deviate from that plan. You can't, if you're gonna do a school project and you're gonna buy textbooks and somebody else comes along, gives you 50% of the money for the textbooks, you can't take that other 50% and go build a playground. Even though it's associated with the school, it's not part of the original project. If you have that situation, my experience has been, you contact the Rotary Foundation and say, this is what we'd like to do, and they'll probably let you do it. But they get really nasty when you do it and then ask permission. Sometimes we get a question on humanitarian, uh, and we see this particularly locally. One thing I want to point out is sometimes what qualifies as humanitarian internationally doesn't really qualify as being humanitarian here because it has to do with the degree of infrastructure that you're talking about in the local community. So what we're saying is that for the district standpoint, it has to fulfill the needs of a particular portion of the community that otherwise would not have access to that type of service or facility. What we're really talking about here are, are uh, disadvantaged individuals uh, or low-income families or groups. Uh, for instance, in Canada, many of our clubs are located in the immediate proximity of First Nations reservations where infrastructure is extraordinarily poor, particularly schools. And so we're looking at those and saying that's a legitimate uh, humanitarian project in that community. Or you could be dealing with families or individuals that have been displaced because of a natural disaster or some other uh, type of uh, occurrence. So in summary, what we're really saying is that any grant supported by the Rotary Foundation has to meet a real community humanitarian need. You've got to have a lot of frequent conversation and communication between all the participants. You need to have a plan to implement that's going to have some measurable goals and measurable outcomes. Uh, you're going to want to look at how is this project going to be sustained once Rotary walks away. Historically, many Rotary projects have been looked at being more of a handout. What we're trying to do now is to create projects that are truly a hand up. And remember that it's my money you're managing. Questions? Questions? One or two questions? Okay, I think we're overwhelmed. <laughs>